Here's a second look at my Bally Astrocade collection. Uh, I'm exploring boxes uh, one, two, and three, and inside you will find many different uh, items, and I look at them very briefly, and in an upcoming video, I will look at them more closely, but first I'm gonna explore my entire collection in brief. Welcome back. I'm going through my collection. This is gonna be my second video. I brought in three boxes from my garage, and they're labeled, so this one is labeled as Astrocade, so is this one, so is this one. They have Astrocade related materials in them, but most of it is kind of mixed up nowadays. Uh, some of these boxes have been tossed around, this one's been tossed around, it is uh, 2000, uh, from 2012, so it's, it's pretty old. Um, and I have boxes out there that uh, have been lingering around for almost 20 years. But boxes do deteriorate, like these U-Haul boxes that I use, supposedly last in a storage unit for three years. That's what they're guaranteed for, but I mean, even though I don't stack them on, some of them don't get stacked on top of one another, they still wear out. So this one is labeled as a console, so Astrocade console, upgrades, RAM, video, etc. Um, Multi-cart and homebrews. Some of that's true, some of it isn't. This one's mostly empty because I have a lot of it inside already. Here we have my shoebox recorder. It says there's bike accessories in here. I don't think that's true. Uh, there's cartridges, and if my cartridges are in here, I might spend a lot of time on here because I have, I don't know, most of the original cartridges, but just the carts, not the boxes. Uh, joystick's new. I used to have many, many of these, but I don't have much of them anymore. And I've got to be careful because I have my uh, camera set up precariously uh, on a tripod in an extended... Uh, wow, I should... If I could take a video of what my camera setup looks like right now, you would laugh. Uh, these are compilation books, and I actually showed those in my last video. They used, usually are kept in here. I have my Build Your Own Computer books in here. I want to one day do a, a video on these. I've probably got 10 to 15 books on how to build a computer. Most of them are from the 1970s, a couple are from the 1980s, and they're like how to build a computer from component parts. Love the idea, don't have the skills to do it myself. I have uh, some VHS tapes uh, from the Astrocade. These are from the early 1980s. And that's how you, you'll see that there's some videos up there on YouTube. They actually come off of these VHS tapes. Um, they're like some commercials and stuff like that. And there's there's some from various sources, but the highest quality ones are from these tapes. Uh, there's a Jam uh, Jamco uh, ASCII keyboard. And this is uh, the exact same keyboard that's used for the Blue Ram keyboard. So that's what we're hoping to find in here. Is that what's gonna be in here? I don't know, let's find out. We'll go through one box at a time, take a look, and I'm not sure if I'm gonna be opening the boxes, getting through them, but we'll get through these even if it takes more than um, one video. I'm trying to uh, do at least one video a week. The last, uh, let's see, today is Thursday. I think since last Saturday I've uploaded three videos, so that's pretty good. If I can average that, uh, I'll be doing good. This is the top of the box that's labeled console, uh, multi-carts, and homebrews. Let's see what we've got in here. Uh, I might end up doing this on the floor, although I have a tiled floor, so it's not gonna be great. So this plastic, I just threw in here semi-recently to uh, keep the dust out if I can. Some plastic wrap. All right, these are three CDs I made for myself. Uh, so I've got uh, CD number one, box uh, two part inventions. Uh, CD number two, 27 Christmas Carols and uh, CD3, uh, Scott Joplin's uh, Ragtime Classics. And this is all uh, music that was created uh, on the Astrocade by uh, George Moses in the early 1980s. And I made them and put them on CD. So this one has like uh, 14 tracks. Um, this one has 27 tracks. This one has 18 tracks. I'll maybe do a little close-up of these a little bit better. All this music is available in MP3 format on uh, BellyAlley.com if you want to check it out. Um, and uh, I don't think I have the wave format versions up there, but maybe I will put them up there. Let's see. What else we got here? We have the S-Video upgrade, which I don't think is actually in here. Yeah, we just have the cables that are required for it. But hey, what are you gonna do? Let's see, throw those in there. And I will try to I'll look at this a little closer. Okay, here's my S-Video upgrade. I am now wearing no shoes. I am on tile, not carpet, and I don't have socks on, and I'm wearing, um, pants that aren't going to conduct static. So let's hopefully not worry about static electricity. Uh, this is a pretty rare upgrade. Um, I don't use it really too often, but I usually use it not for video, but for the audio out. It's in there. Trust me. I'm having a little bit of trouble getting it out of there, but it's in there. Oops, there goes this twist tie. I'll take a closer look at these things after I get it all out of the box. 
Um, I just thought this was kind of cool to see it in there. I used to have uh, two of these. I gave one away to a fellow who uh, was living in Japan who was having trouble getting his Astrocade with RF set up in Japan. So I just sent him the extra one I had. Let's take this out of there. So the fact that there's an Astrocade right in Japan is pretty neat. Um, oh, this is the instructions for the music cassette. And this is an unreleased cartridge. Um, it was supposed to have been released back in the 19, um, early 1980s, uh, but never was. Um, and I have a version that Michael White he made, I think, about 30 of them. And uh, so you can see it here. It's got an overlay. And that's it right there. And as you can see, it's the only cartridge besides Astro Basic that has a built-in cassette interface. Pretty neat. Um, yeah, I, I think mine might not be working 100% anymore. I mean, it works. I can't save. Um, I mean, it pretends it saves, and I think it locks up now. Didn't used to do that, so I think maybe the, the ROM is, is messed up or something like that, or the EEPROM. I mean, it was probably burned in 1985, so 35 years ago. Yeah, a long time ago. And uh, these instructions for the music cassette, uh, I think they were actually available in the Arcadian, but uh, I have originals of them somewhere. Let's see, plastic bag to hold. Oh, good, this is one of my Astrocades. So this is um, one of my basic cartridges. Um, this is, yeah, I, I bought a box of 10 of these. And I've been giving them away to people off and on. Uh, these are reproductions. Well, this one's a reproduction of Treasure Cove. Um, it's still shrink wrapped. Uh, well, it's been opened, but uh, so this was made um, by Brent uh, a few years ago. Um, Brett Bilbray um, colorized this. This was originally a black and white drawing, I believe, and um, sold these for about $25 or $30 a couple years ago. I think they're sold out now. I don't know how many he made altogether. Uh, Brent, if you're watching this, maybe you could comment in the show notes uh, below and, or in the comments area here on YouTube and uh, let us know. Um, should take a yeah, I'll, I'll do closer uh, closer pictures there. All right here are the two uh, games that I did not write, but I did um, help get released. This is the first one by War, or called War, and this is Crazy Climber. These are uh, both 8K cartridges, and they're for the Astrocade. And um, they are, are inside of the uh, CD-ROM cases, special CD-ROM cases. You've probably seen reviews of these on, on the internet. Um, this is number limited edition 250, and I did, um, I had a friend, uh, Ward Trake, do this cover art, and my friend, uh, Paul Baptiste did this cover art, and I put the boxes together and made the background and stuff like that. I think they turned out pretty good. I'll, I'll show these a little bit later. Maybe I'm only going to have time. I've already been recording here for a few minutes, and, uh, so the in, inside of this, oh, the, here's my little white ram. Um, I usually don't use this one, but I do sometimes, and, uh... I have a blue RAM, so I use that more often because I can load tapes directly into it. And what else? Now we have my Astrocade. And this is one of the reason this is one of the things I want to dig out of there. So somehow I have I only have one cartridge, but I have two cassette overlays for the um music cartridge. Not sure how I got that. Um I have several of these different overlays here or dust plastic dust covers. Check it out here. These are uh the two uh the Bally Professional Arcade and the Bally uh, Computer System. I think this is the first one. This is a later one. Let's see what else we got in here. We have uh, Astro Basic. This one is uh, labeled by uh, Richard Hauser. He's the one who uh, used to have a whole bunch of software out there for available from uh, something called, was it the catalog? Something like that. Uh, oh, video art. This is, um, oh, I was just doing a test. Uh, if you can see what this is. This is what happens when I start going through here. I'm like, oh, reminisce, reminisce. I made this in what uh, it says here. It's from 1984. I was just seeing what it would look like on a TV. This is a video I captured, and I just want to see what it looked like if I put it to a DVD and uh, watched it on my TV. It looks okay. Uh, these are various uh, cables that I use to transfer. These are monster cables, which actually turns out are not very good. Um, I mean, they're okay, but they're not as good as you would suspect. Oh, these are copies of my CDs, of the music CDs that I was showing earlier. Oh, some of them are. Actually, I take that back. Some of these are, and some of them are not. Some of these are programs that you can load directly from CD-ROM. Wow, well, probably only going to go through one box here today. What's this? This is... Oh, heat sinks, which I've never applied. So I bought three little miniature heat sinks here. These would go on top of my chips. Uh, 
that overheat like the three custom chips. I think I bought three of them. I didn't get the glue though, I don't think. All right, inside we have my AstroCade material. Oh, uh, here's uh, the little label that came with my blue RAM um, from Ken. So thanks Ken for that, pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, in fact, when I picked it up, this is what came in it. I don't know, I, don't, I, I hope you're enjoying this video. Let me know if this is a pain in the butt to watch. Um, I'm, I'm not really, I don't know. It's, it's fun for me to make and that's what counts here. Uh, so what, what he enclosed at the time was my 32K um, RAM expansion unit and also the CD-ROM that had the um, manual on uh, in PDF format, which is, now it's online, you can read it if you want to. It's on ballyalley.com. And I'm not actually gonna take the astrocade out of the box. You know what an astrocade looks like. I'll leave it in there. It's got, uh, this one has three controllers in there. This one does work. Um, I have two of them. One of them works to some extent. One of them doesn't work great. Um, oh, and here, this, what these are, I got these from Mike White back in the early 2000s. And these were used to ship third-party software on. So like if you bought something from L&M, oftentimes, or like, oh man, this thing's about to break. You can feel it. But, um, like, or, or wave makers, you would get, it would come in a box like this. And sometimes with a little overlay and you pay like, I think they were $14.95 for some companies, $9.95 for others. And your basic program, you usually get two basic programs, one on each side. And um, one would be like an A side, which is the better program. One would be like the B side, which is, you know, not as good, but also a good program and hopefully fun. All right, so that's what's in this box. I'm gonna leave the rest in here, but I'm gonna do a quick, am I gonna do a close up of that? No, I think maybe I'll go through the other boxes and see what we have. This is box number two. This one is labeled Astrocade Compilation Books. Build your own computer books and uh, it's got some VHS tapes and an ASCII keyboard. This is actually the second time I've actually opened this box to start going through it and I realized I, I need to probably do this with my other boxes too, is um, there was shipping labels all over a whole bunch of stuff and I just took those boxes out. They were actually empty, but they had my addresses on it, I had some other people's addresses in the Astrocade community and I didn't want to keep, keep them in here. So I have this paper here because it's covering up this keyboard, keep it a little safe. It's probably louder than that, anything, but I'll move this out of the way. And here we go. This is an ASCII keyboard. It is the same keyboard that was used for the Blue Ram keyboard. Um, I have a Blue Ram keyboard, or I own one. I don't know, I lent it out to someone. I don't know who I did. I asked a few people and um, they don't have them. So I don't know what I did with it. It's probably lost forever now, which is okay because I never used it. I find it's easier to use 24 keys on the keypad. If you can believe that. Um, keyboard feels okay for, and I, this came out in like, this one is labeled as 1979. So, that's when it first started being sold. It was first, I think, available for the Blue Ram in 1980, so it was relatively new at the time. Um, it feels okay. Um, keyboards back then left quite a bit to be desired. I guess this one must be spring-loaded because it still works. If it was, um, what do you call it, like uh, some of them use sponges and they're very inexpensive to make, but the sponges have deteriorated over the years and you have to replace all the sponges. Um, and that's from, some computers from the 70s and 80s did that. Um, I'm glad I don't have anything like that. Oh man, that cap looks like it has to be replaced. But this thing has probably never been, well, actually it does look, if you take a look here, it looks like it has been plugged into something at least once. All right, so that's that. All right, put that aside. And now we have mostly books. Let me take some more of this paper out and not make too much noise. All right, we've got some three VHS tapes. So here we have the Arcadian samplers of programs listed in the Arcadian, uh, plus some surprises. It's 23 minutes long. If you're interested in watching this, it's available on um, uh, YouTube. You can watch this video. It's recorded from this tape. Um, this is a, a video of Hot Rod Basic being used. It's about 16 minutes long. It's Jay Fenton uh, showing it off. And that's available on uh, YouTube as well. It's been recorded from this tape. And this is from September 1982. This is the five minute demo tape of um, that you can see on uh, YouTube as well. It's also recorded from this tape. This several, this one has more than several one source, but the best source is, is this tape here. What it would be interesting would be to send this thing off, this tape to someone who has really high quality capture equipment nowadays. They can probably spiff it up and make it look really good, but I don't know who to send that off to. If you know someone, it's not even in a cardboard box. If you know someone who, who can do really great captures, and I mean like some, there's some high tech stuff that can be done nowadays. This is something this is probably sent to Bob Fabris from uh, Astrocade Inc. and um, for him to help promote. So 
Yeah, yeah, pretty pretty neat little five minute demo. All right, what else we have in here? Some books. So this is the source code for Astro Basic and Ballet Football. This is the photocopies of the source code. I actually um, typed both of all the source code in. Uh, Astro Basic is uh, what uh, 8K, and a Ballet Football I think is a 4K cartridge. But it's all in here. This this is like I don't know if you're familiar with Z80, then you'll you'll be a little you'll understand this a little better. What the heck is that doing in here? Subway card, huh? Um, man, I haven't eaten at Subway in... When, is, when was this compiled? 2003. Probably haven't eaten there for, since around then. Probably 15 or 16 years. Uh, so, this is available if you want to look at the source code for Astro Basic or Ballet Football. That's available on BalletAlley.com. This is another version of... Uh, yeah, let's see the glare here. This is the, the ROM system listing. Uh, this is the retyped one. Oh no, this isn't the retyped one. I showed this in my last video, and I was talking about how I was able to clean this up. So the version of this uh, assembly listing that I first had was this, but this right here you see was in red. So if you made a photocopy, you could read it, the original, easily. But this part, when you photocopied the red, it turned out black, and it was made it a little more difficult to read, and it also said proprietary information. Um, but this was available from the Astrocade, or from the Arcadian newsletter starting in... 78 or 79 and uh, from what I understand uh, it was it was fine you could buy it I think it was $20 or $25 for the photocopy of the book and it told you exactly how everything in um, <laughs> the arcade worked maybe it was available first 79 but early on really really early on and that's how people were able to uh, figure out how to uh, well one of the ways people were able to figure out how the astrocade worked um, and it's also one of the ways I believe that uh, People were able to have a homebrew scene uh, with not just basic, but also uh, machine language starting in the 1970s for a home console was because the source material was available from the original manufacturer. This is the uh, home library uh, uh, listing. This was also a compilation um, similar to what's in there. I'm not going to get into that. Now these books, oh, check this out. Here's a TV typewriter cookbook. Does this, the picture on the cover of that look familiar to you? It's not exactly the same, but it's the same keyboard mechanism. So, yeah, or I guess it's, yeah, it's, it's not the same, it's very similar, it's probably from the same source. This is a very famous book. I'm not going to show all of these, but basically this has allowed you to um, have an inexpensive way, and in, when did this book come out? 79, maybe even earlier, 76, to have a keyboard, like an ASCII keyboard hooked up and giving a display on a TV screen, and it is all using component parts. Man, it's dusty in this box. My wife is, she's got asthma. She's going to hear about this. I should open some windows. Uh, this is another book on how to uh, build your own microcomputer from component parts. Uh, this one is one that uh, uses the 2650 uh, CPU, which is the same CPU used in the Arcadia. This book is the only book I'm aware of that t shows you how to build a computer from component parts that is emulated. So the person who wrote the Ar Arcadia emulator also wrote an emulator for the TV games computer. And this scan for this is uh, available online, so if you want to check this out, you can. This is a really, really um, neat book. It takes you step by step on how to build a computer. By the time this book was published, you could already get computers um, on how to uh, build your own, or already pre-built. In fact, this came out in 81, and it's, just, it's really a compilation and a little bit expansion of articles that were first printed in a, a German magazine in the 1970s, I think. Something like that. All right. What else we got here? Uh, how to design, build, and uh, program your own advanced working computer system. These are all books. How to build your own self-programming robot. How to build a program. How to build and program your own working computer system. That's part one of the one I just talked about. This is the same book, but this one's a soft cover that has a cool cover. Um, let's see, I've already gone through these. This is how to build um, games from, uh, like, simpler games, not computers, but you are, I think, using um, CPUs. Um, this is a great book if you want to uh, know how to uh, fix computers from or video game consoles from the 1970s. It's got all sorts of information on how to do it. The schematics. My buddy, um, Rick, if you're watching this, um, you should take a look at this. Uh, this is how to fix the original Odyssey. Um, there's a schematic in here, I think. Yeah, here's a schematic for the Odyssey. I think, yeah. 
yeah, pretty pretty great uh, book. Um, I don't understand it all. In fact, I don't understand most of it. But what I like about it is the the information was put out there and was available in the 1970s. But people probably expected that this kind of information wasn't available until the internet came around. Um, but it wasn't true. Uh, people would comp compile stuff like this and put them into book form. Um, and I don't know if they were hard to find or not, but I was able to buy these back in the early 2000s, the late 1990s, when these things were cheap. Cheap, cheap. Now this kind of stuff is very collectible. There's some books I want to get in these series that are um, hundreds of dollars now, which I'm, I'm never going to pay that for a book. Um, and I have a friend here locally who buys books by uh, Arthur Macon, and he would probably say, well, if it was an Arthur Macon book, Adam, you would buy it, wouldn't you? And I wouldn't pay that much, but, you know, I, I do appreciate uh, the value of a book, especially when they are uh, cool. Uh, this one's how to build a, six, a working 16-bit microcomputer. This is from 1979, and the uh, CPU that they use in here is the same one that was built uh, and used in the ti 994 a which I'm forgetting the name of it. Oh, there it is. It's called the TI-9900 CPU. Um, two more books to go through in this box, then I'm putting this one together. Uh, Micro-based electronic games. This is, I think, this is part one or part two of the book I showed earlier, this one. They say they're, they're both got the same name, but they're actually different books. One, I think they're separate editions, and it's weird that they don't say anything different about them, but I was uh, clued in uh, by reading a, a review of them, and even though they have the same names, and I think they have different uh, ISBN numbers, but other than that, you wouldn't know that they're the same book. One would just seem to be a hardcover, and one would seem to be the softcover. But that's not the case. Um, okay, this is probably one of my favorites. Um, this is, when was this built? This is a, building a computer from component parts in 1979. But the reason it's called How to Build a Microcomputer and Really Understand It, okay, I don't know if you can get a really good picture of this, but look at this. So this is the RAM. I think it's being built all with diodes. I think, if I remember, it's been a long time since I looked at this. Did I leave a note in here on what this one's made of? No. But there's, um, you build your RAM with diodes, I think. Um, and you look at, look at that. I mean, it's, to me, this is incredible. I would love to see if, if anyone has seen anyone build these, uh, it's, I'd like to see them. But this is what I'm impressed with. Check this out. You open it up. Now, back in the 1970s and 80s, and maybe even the 90s, people would take stuff like this and make their own PCBs uh, using etching copper and stuff like that. And so you would do, you'd take a photocopy of this, I think you'd put it on plastic, make a photocopy of this on the plastic, and then uh, put it under like, I don't know, I've never done it. But you somehow, you'd put it in chemicals that would etch off the copper, and you'd be left with these traces, and then you'd drill out the holes, see, so, I don't know if you can see here, but... Each one of these little black dots has holes. And you drill out those holes yourself. And then you do this enough times with all the parts. Um, oh my lord. There's, I don't know. This is a crazy little... If there's anyone interested in uh, in this book, let me know. I, I'm not going to get rid of it, but um, I don't think it's been scanned. And I don't really have a way to scan a book like this. If someone wants to uh, find out if this is available to be scanned or something like that, let me know. Yeah, but then again, I, I you know, I, do are people interested in this kind of stuff? I thought there would be, but there's really not any website or anything dedicated to these old books. Um, and there are people who are interested in building their own computers, but they use modern peripherals and uh, hardware to do it, which is fine, and that's the way to go. But this is, uh, you know, this would have been, when did I say this was from 79? And it's, you know, that's... <laughs> 42 years ago, so if you wanted to really understand it, and I have, uh, I've browsed all my books, I haven't read them all from cover to cover, but I've browsed them all, and this one is really neat, because it tells you what's going on behind the scenes, more than the other ones, because you're using a lot of chips. But that's what's in this box, I'm going to put this one back together, open up one more box, and that'll be it for today. This is my third and last box of Astrocade material. This one is labeled as shoebox recorder, which is um, a cassette tape recorder, uh, cartridges, and joysticks new. So let's open it up. Okie dokie. Let's make sure that this one doesn't have a label on it. All right, oh yeah, there's, I have so many cartridges for the system. Some of them are just one of a kind. Um, all right, so th this is what the original box looked like for the arcade cartridges. If you were to buy this, it came with two uh, inside of it. They were labeled as, I think they were labeled as three and four. So this is probably, maybe not in this case. I can't remember, I used to have about five or six of these. Um, I've told this story before in probably another video, but I was uh, 
in the mid 1990s I would I was at this uh, surplus store here in El Puri on Central Avenue called uh, Sandia Surplus. It's still there, still selling surplus. It doesn't have these things anymore, but I had a box probably uh, I don't know, five feet wide, square, um, and five feet deep, and it was just full of nothing but plastic wrapped, each one brand new, Ast or Astrocade controllers, and they wanted ten bucks for them each, which would be a steal, a steal. And I was like, what? I, I think I was offering them two bucks, I wanted to buy some, so I didn't buy any, and not that I needed them, I, they'd probably still be wrapped in plastic till this day, but um, yeah, I wonder whose hands those are. <laughs> Alright, so, got that. So here we go. Maybe I'll look at these first. So this is, these are tape storage boxes, but that's not what's in here. We have cartridges. And in the Arcadian, you could buy these. They came with stickers, and I think I've scanned a few of them. And so that you can get, um, you would be able to see what cartridges you had inside of a box. I'll open up the other one first, because I think those are the earlier numbers. Man, I'm glad I'm doing this because I haven't looked at these boxes in quite a while. Alright, so. Okay, so let's look at them this way. I don't know if that helps at all. Of course, the correct way to do this would be not be holding it, but we've got number one pinball. I don't know the scheme, they're not the. the I guess I should turn them so that they are facing in this direction. I don't know why they're, where the numbers came from. They're not in alphabetical order or anything. We've got uh, pinball, football, and these are all the original cartridges. Um, handball, like Amazing Maze, Seawolf, um, Space Invaders. Is this one labeled as Space Invaders? Yeah, Space Invaders. Because um, this was, some of these cartridges were released with, re released with different names. So, so you can see Space Invaders 1977 on there. Um, and I still, I've looked and tried to figure out what the deal is with some of these names and why they were changed. I still don't know. Um, Tank and Red Baron. I'm not going to go through all these, but I've got 15 cartridges right there, the originals. What else? From here, we have more of those, some of the originals. And as we get higher, um, some of the originals get, are harder to find. Like Pirates Chase is a little bit harder. Um, Cosmic Raiders. It's kind of hard to find. It's also one of the best games for the system. Solar Conqueror, also another hard one to find. I think Cosmic Raiders and... Let's see, so Cosmic Raiders and Solar Conqueror are... I wouldn't say they're my two favorite games, but I think from the original lineup of games for the system, um, from Bally or Astrocade Inc., I think they're probably the most advanced games. Um, I don't think that's true overall, but they're definitely... From that period of time, and it would have been their most advanced game. Let's see, we've got more Astro, Astro Battle also. So there's a, an Astro Battle. All right, um, bum, bum, bum. what else we got here? We have a Muncher Test Program. So this is uh, just Pac-Man. Oh, this is Ward Trade's Multi-Cart. This is number zero, zero. And uh, I think I have the only one that has a back on it. And if you look, the I've talked about this before in other videos, but this is the latest uh, re revision of the, a, uh, it's not an 8K EEPROM. This is a 206K or 512K EEPROM, I can't remember. And it's soldered on there. Um, but in order to make it fit, he had to take off this. So what he did, as a neat little gimmick, he um, made it look like you can see the entire cartridge inside, like as if this was plastic, but it is not. All right, what else we got in this little artillery duel? What's this one? Incredible Wizard, of course. Astro Basic. All right, so those 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 are my originals. Um, these are moving right along. Here's some more of uh, uh, these hand controllers. I used to have a lot of these. All right. Um, uh, this cartridge, or this box, I should say, has weird cartridges. These are multi carts from the 1980s. Um, these were um, made by uh, Michael White. Uh, in the 1980s or so. I bought these in the early 2000s. Um, so in order, there's actually six or eight programs on here. Um, and uh, you can run them each, each one separately by putting the dip switches in a certain position. And then you could run them. So, yeah. Uh, I should probably do a close-up of this box. This box is pretty cool to look at. I might do that. I'll, I'll put this as, I'll, I'll go through them real quick in case I don't do a close-up. So we have Beatles Music by Richard Degler. We have Quad Run by uh, Michael White, or Quadra, excuse me, not Quad, quad Run. Um, 
This is a cartridge shell, which I was messing around with, and inside, uh, you can actually buy PCBs that were made in the 1980s, so you can make your own cartridges. I don't know of another console you could do that for either. Let's see what else is in here. There's some other miscellaneous stuff, but I'm not going to go into this one too deeply. Um, I uh, kind of want to, but this video is already long enough, and I am so dusted out of here. My wife is going to be, she's going to come through and smell this, I'm sure. What else we got here? This was, I don't know what that is. Oh, here's some uh, EPROMs I have. Oh, I forgot I had these in here. Uh, so this is the, the cartridge case building kit. Oh, here's some originals. Um, so if you look online, uh, you can find ADS monitor. It's a 2K monitor without instructions. Don't know where it came from. Um, but it is, uh, this is the original it was, it came from. This is part of the Bob Fabris collection. All we had was this EPROM. We dumped it and now you can play it in, you know, MAME or whatever. Uh, here's some other programs that uh, I have made copies of and things like that. These are all EPROMs. I think some of them are 2K, some are 4K, and some are 8K. Let's put that back together. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah, that's not really going back, but that's okay. I'll put it together later. Uh, let's see. More controllers, more controllers. Oh. Some more of these. These are two different ones I showed you some earlier. Let's see what else we got here. Um, oh. Dang it. Well, that's my old address, so. Oh, so here is. A, I use this. It's the only. It's, I think it's one of a kind. It was made um, by Retro Kids. Um, this is a 48K RAM expansion. I don't think there's another 48K RAM expansion out there. Um, Ken, uh, I'm speaking to Ken Lil here. Uh, you might be watching this video. Did you ever have a 48K RAM expansion? I know that there were 64K RAM expansions, uh, but they swapped uh, RAM and ROM in and out. Um, they were super expensive. I think Mike White is the only person I know who had those. Put this away, put it out later. Oh, by the way, what I think is neat about this one is you can, um, it works good, but it's built into an Astro Basic card, which is pretty darn cool. Yeah, this is made by Mike in Texas, and I can't remember his last name. All right. Um, oh, more VHS cartridges, or VHS cartridges, VHS tapes. These are copies of the ones I showed earlier. Um, what have we got here? This is, um, these are just cartridges that were sent to me um, so I could reuse them. I got these sent to me in 2001 so that I could possibly um, use them for parts and I did use them for parts as a matter of fact. And I believe I showed this off in my basic uh, box or my basic video on how to use basic and so this is um, if you wanted to pr uh, load up a basic program you load it with this and nowadays we do it with WAV files from a phone or a computer. Um, so that's this box. That's all I'm going to show. I'm not going to go through it in detail. I might pick out some choice items and go through them a little bit later. But I just want to see what I have. And it's not that I feel like you guys really want to see it. But if you do and you made it to this part of the video, then obviously you did. So thanks for watching. Um, and uh, I'll be going through some more boxes uh, probably next week. Um, yeah, this is the weekend. It is now still mid-March. And it's supposed to be a nice day today. Uh, and it is a nice day. It's mid-afternoon. And uh, this weekend's supposed to be really nice too. All right, uh, so let's zoom in on one of the neat things about the Astrocade. You could loan, uh, get your own recorder and make your own programs using BASIC. And then save them to tape or load them from tape. All right, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you again soon.